realizing they needed to change their form, um, you know, and going from squatting a certain way to a new way. They said the first time they did what sounds like a knee dominant squat is their knee uh, was killing them, uh, was killing them. So um, this is something where it's, you know, whenever you're trying something new, you have to think people don't really realize whenever you're changing execution or making an adjustment to execution, it can have the same effect as using a new load. Um, and so the more drastic the change of an execution, the more drastic uh, sometimes the change can be an actual load. And so when we talk load in the muscle building world, you know, we look at what occurs at a joint. So we're really talking torque because muscles from our standpoint, they create tension. You know, tension is the same as force, but when we're talking muscles, we say tension. They create tension that creates torque at a joint, uh, lots of times in response to an external thing. Um, so again, a, a big part of that is obviously the load that you're using. But you guys have heard me talk about a lot is the moment arm. Um, and the moment arm in terms of gravity for right now, let's just say, but it's it's the line of force um, that you're using. So every everything that any, anything that's weight or load uh, has force that goes along with it. And there's a line, a direction that that force is being uh, applied and it can be kind of changing sometimes depending on the machine or whatever it is but all, at any given point it has a direction and so it's the distance that line of force is the closest distance that line of force is to the axis or the joint you're using I try not to make that confusing but it's not the easiest thing in the universe it's, it's easier when you draw it it's harder when you talk about it uh, so in terms of gravity let's say with the lateral raise it's the horizontal distance um, you know of the line of force which is gravity imagine a line going straight through that dumbbell that it is from your shoulder joint. So again, that's why everybody knows this. If you do a lateral raise, you can't see, but if I got the arm right below my shoulder joint, it's really, really easy. There's, It's really cake to do this, everyone can do this. So this could be 10 degrees of range of motion through the joint, it's the same 30 pound dumbbell. Why is it easy here? And why is 10 degrees right up here with the same dumbbell fucking brutal? It's because of that horizontal distance. Those are the two things that add up to create torque at the joint that ultimately your muscles have to manage with tension. So if I go from here, a 30 pound dumbbell right here, you know, it's maybe it's at the bottom, it's maybe, you know, three inches away from the joint. So it's that weight times three inches. That's the torque. That's what your joint has to handle. When it goes up here and it turns into 30 inches, let's say, it's 10 times more torque. So this could be the same thing, Mason, that happened at your knee. If you've done a hip dominant squat your whole life, even if let's say you're using 300 pounds, they, they give the example, they use 155 for their top set. But let's even say you use 300 pounds normally or more. Say you use 400 pounds normally and you do a hip dominant squat and your hips are very far back. You squat to whatever your depth is. When you're at the bottom, let's say your hips are 18 inches back from the bar. So it's that load times that 18 inches. That's the torque at your hips and that's what you have to handle. If it's very hip dominant, that bar path could only be an inch from your knee. So you basically got 400 pounds times an inch and that's the torque that your knee has to handle. Now let's say you're learning to knee dominant squat for the first time, and as you go down, now you're pushing your knees 12 inches uh, away from that bar path, so 12 inches forward. So 400 pounds times one inch is whatever, 400 inch pounds torque, whatever you wanna call it. Now we're doing 155 pounds, my math's gonna get horrible because math is hard, but if you're doing 155 pounds for your top set, and it's 12 inches away from that bar path, or yeah, from the bar path, now you just multiply 155 times 12. Obviously, that's a drastically bigger number than whatever someone's gonna do my math and say, so you should have fucking known that. Whatever, it's a bigger number than it is from that 400 inch pounds of torque. So the point is, people don't realize that um, load on the bar is not the only thing that equates to actual numbers. Lots of times when we talk form and execution, everybody thinks it's this abstract, feely, squeezy, blah, 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 whatever bullshit. I fucking hate that. I hate qualitative stuff when it comes to training. Ooh, this felt hard. Ooh, I'm squeezing really hard this time. Oh, I'm squeezing harder next time. People sometimes don't understand mechanics. Mechanics are mechanics. They change numbers in the body. You could draw it, you could graph it, you could get rough. It's a little bit more complicated because the body's 3D, whatever, that's a whole fucking other conversation. But you can get a very good idea of what's going on if you actually drew things out and determine what the torque is actually. It joins torque will equate to actual numbers. So, even though Mason you use way less weight this time um, than you did the other time, you could have technically been putting three times more torque, which just think tension, think load, force on that knee joint than has ever been there. And so everything in the training world is about what you can tolerate. So you can do it, you can tolerate, and then from there, what can your body actually recover from and handle? So just imagine, it's like if you said, okay, I'm, I've only squatted 400 pounds ever, so today I'm gonna go and I'm gonna try 1,200 pounds. 
that might be the, the perception of basically what's actually occurring at the joint from a torque standpoint. So it's all about what you can tolerate, what you can recover from, what's appropriate progression. And everyone agrees that to some extent that you want to make small progressions. If you ever do too much too fast, you're going to have something like this happen, arguably, um, which is pain in the knee, pain in whatever. So all I can say is you have to have some awareness of how big of a difference is it, how far is that knee twice as far away, three times as far away, four times as far away from the bar path that it's ever been. You have to go super, super, super light. So this, you said they did six sets total. I mean, if you're going to do six sets, you have to do the most baby, baby. I would, I would try and not make it perceivably difficult the first time you do something brand new, just the first time. And then every single time, baby progression, baby progression, baby progression, make sure it's not too much stimulus. Make sure it's something that your body can actually tolerate. And that, of course, is all outside of, unfortunately, I can't see you do this. I can't watch. Um, so there obviously could be something going on say an ankle doesn't move or who knows what, so you're going down, you know, your right side's going fine, your left side isn't working, you know, if your ankle doesn't move, your knee's taking it or it's your hip doesn't go the right way, you're putting your knee somewhere it shouldn't be. So obviously there's a whole lot of stuff I can't see or can't tell. Um, so aside from maybe a mechanics issue or an imbalance or who knows what, that's the main culprit I would look at is really have a good idea of when something's a new stimulus or a new progression or a new load, be very, very aware of the amount. Make sure that you can tolerate it in very slow, small progressions over time.